One of the cool things I think about Japan, um, and Aizu in particular, is that they try to blend present day life with past historical significance. What we're looking at right now is a temple. And this is not a shrine. Um, oh no, wait, no, it's the other way around, sorry. This is a shrine, not a temple. Uh, but the shrine is one of the bigger shrines, more important shrines in Aizu. Um, a lot of people come here uh, on the day of the new year, New Year's Eve after it turns over to the, to the first. They come here to pray for the new year, etc. And if you don't know much about Japanese culture, I'll, I'll give you this a little bit. Um, the new year, every temple rings their temple bell 108 times for the perceived 108 sins that human beings uh, do according to Buddhist thought. Uh, I've been to this temple or the shrine a couple of times. I've been here and prayed myself and, and with my with my now extended family. Uh, and we're gonna go in for just a few minutes. I'm gonna take you into the temple here. Or the, yeah, I'm gonna take you in here. <laughs> I just can't think or even talk in, in even in English anymore. All right, so see those two white pillars right there? Those used to be a gate, but thanks to that wonderful earthquake, the gate fell over. And it's really kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say morbid, I don't want to say surreal. Maybe I do want to say surreal. Uh, because as I was touring around with my mother-in-law not too long ago, uh, yes, no, Monday in fact, uh, she gave me a book. Uh, a book about all of the Tohoku region, which is which is you know the northern section of the main island of Japan, um, showing pictures of all the devastation and all of the uh, damage from the earthquake and the tsunami, and a picture of that gate back there is in the book. Um, it was really kind of scary, you know, to think that a, a place that I knew. Uh, and have been to a number of times could take that kind of damage. The good news is the main area is still intact. So here we go. On now to sacred ground. Okay. Now each shrine has a different deity, a uh, different reason for DTs. Um, some are focused on education. I want to have a better brain. I want to be smarter, etc. Some are focused on sp more spiritual concepts, uh, i.e. I want to be more compassionate. I want to have uh, a better understanding of children, parents, etc. Uh, and some are just for general prayers. But either way, when you come to a place like this, before you're allowed to enter the temple proper, you come to the fountain that's outside and you pur purify yourself. You wash your hands, you take the little ladles, see if I can do this on camera. You take the ladle and you pour it on your hands, okay? And then you take the ladle and you sip from it a bit, but you don't swallow. You spit it out outside here. So you're purifying your hands and purifying what you're going to say before you go and say it. And then outside the temple, there's all sorts of different deities to pray for here. And you'll have to forgive me, it's been a while since I've been here, so I don't remember what everybody is and, and what each place stands for. But, ooh, that one looks like it got hit by, this, by the quake too. Huh. But, almost every place has a little sales shop that sells um, fortunes that sells um, Lucky Charms, etc. 
For example, over here and here again, another example of, of differences between Japan and America, self-service, put the right amount of money in here, reach in and get your fortune. Omikuji. Okay. These are all fortunes. And it tells you in some cases, like this one over here, whatever you pick up out of the box, that's what your next year or month or week or whatever is going to be like. I'm not going to try and translate all that, I'm sorry. <laughs> You'll have to learn a little bit of it and come and see for yourself. But once you've washed your hands, etc., and you make it up to the temple proper, okay, see the bells? If I show you up, see the bells? Okay, we gotta go wake up the gods. So, what I do is I toss some a, a coin or two in there. And now yesterday I didn't have one, but today I do. This is a 50 yen coin, and you'll notice that there's a hole in the middle. So it better represents a complete circle um, you know, as a path going around the outside than, say, for example, a 100 yen coin, which has no hole. Okay? So, the coin with the hole in the middle symbolizes the circle of life and is a stronger imprint on the god, supposedly, to accept your offering. So, you throw it in there. And then you grab the rope. And you ring the bell, and here's where you would clap. Sorry, that was me clapping my arm. And bow. And pray. And then you're done. Okay, a place like this has other places you can walk around. Pray for, again, pray for different um, prayers for school or, or work or family health, etc. And then when you're done, then you come over to the shop and you buy yourself a lucky charm or a, a fortune, etc., etc. Okay? Now, um, in Japan, when you come to buy a fortune, you come to buy a fortune. You buy a fortune for different reasons. Take, for example, one of these, this one, safe driving. So you hang it in your car. Let's see, there's one over here. Some of these are just regular, general good luck. Um, Ah, okay. So the one that she's getting out right now is for the safe delivery of a baby. Okay? And you can get all sorts of these at a place just like this. 